Hello, hello, hello. Good morning from Bali and thank you so very much for joining me in today's live stream. Um, if you guys are here joining me live, I would love to know that you're here. Uh, and so let me know your name, your uh, where you're from, uh, and what is your burning question around um, career transitions and lifestyle choice uh, changes in your life. And I would love to answer that for you uh, during this live stream. So let me know where you're from, uh, what questions that you may have uh, regarding career transitions and lifestyle changes. Um, for all of you who may be watching for the first time or ever attended a live stream here, welcome. Uh, I usually do these about once or twice a week on this page. Uh, so every time that I uh, schedule one, you'll be notified and you can actually get notified of a reminder as well to jump on. Uh, or of course, watch the replay of the live stream um, when it's finished the broadcast. But uh, I love doing live streams because I love having real conversations with all of you uh, and take all the questions that I sometimes don't get answered uh, right away when people email me. So I take a lot of the topics that people email me about and actually turn them into live streams. So uh, give me your questions and your question will probably be answered uh, in upcoming live streams as well. Uh, and from all of, for you guys that are brand new here uh, and seeing me for the first time, uh, welcome again. And I'm Lydia Lee, I'm the founder and corporate escape coach at Screw the Cubicle. Uh, and primarily, I really help people reinvent their work and uh, look at different career opportunities that are outside uh, the walls of their cubicle fluorescent lighting uh, zone. So you are in the right place if you're someone that's been feeling like there's more to life and more to your work than just clocking in and out uh, of your job. Uh, and you are probably here because you're, cra you're, you're craving creative freedom. Uh, in the way that you want to live your life and the way that you want to make a living. Um, and you are in the best time ever in the planet to do this. And this is sort of why I'm really excited to talk about this topic um, today. So um, this conversation is really going to be about um, the myths around careers and uh, lifestyle choices that have been taught to you uh, in the past. And, and you know, we are now coming into a very different version of life uh, than, than was ever experienced before. And so there's a lot of unlearning that has to be done. I definitely uh, had to do a lot of that when I was quitting my job five years ago. Um, and unlearning what is that definition of success and definition of happiness uh, so that we're led to have more meaningful work lives rather than just this thing that pays the bills. And so I really want to talk about what that future of work can look like for you. Uh, and what do you have to prepare, you know, to ensure that you are taking advantage of this new wave uh, of new types of work, uh, new ways of making a living that may not be what you know today, right? This is sort of the point of the live stream today. Um, so if you're someone that's really feeling dissatisfied or unfulfilled at your job, really, you are not alone. Uh, you are amongst, uh, I think the number was something like 52.5% of Americans who have actually said they were unhappy at work. So a lot of us are absolutely craving uh, more to what we define is our work lives. And that balance and marriage of, um, you know, living a good life and not waiting until holidays or waiting until retirement to experience uh, is more and more the new truth and that new normal uh, for us today, you know, and it's all about finding out how to get to that new normal and be abreast of uh, to know really what's going on uh, in, 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 in our world right now that's going to allow you to have a lot more opportunities than ever before. Um, really up until recently, not that long ago, like a full-time job was really the sign of being an adult, right? Um, it was like this one step towards this American dream or Canadian dream or wherever you came from uh, of, you know, having a great job, owning a home, and then having a family, getting promoted, and then retiring, right? That's been the sort of traditional trajectory uh, of that version of success. Uh, but more and more of us today, and I think this is why you're attending this live stream, is that when, yet what we perceive is this having it all, right? This picket fence home and this family and, and doing it this way um, is and 
can be very different from uh, what our own parents have envisioned for us. You know, I come from um, an immigrant family that migrated to Canada when I was eight or nine years old. You know, my mother's been, she just recently retired, but she was working at a, at a company for 35 plus years, you know, um, and this is sort of her version of success. And granted, that is very fair because to be in a new country and to be able to climb that corporate ladder uh, was a big milestone for her. And, and it did reserve her that safety net, you know, to be making a living while she's in a new country. And she really needed to do it that way, right? Because that, that was not, you know, what we have today in technology and opportunities wasn't really available to her. And I learned a lot of, um, her version of success of what I needed to do to get out of university, get that internship, get that job, climb the ladder, get there. And I did, you know, I was making six figures before I quit my job and about to make a, a partner, make, be made partner at the company I was in and giving that up really felt like I was failing, you know, and why was I doing that? She, uh, my mother definitely felt like I was having a sort of quarter life crisis or midlife crisis too early. Um, but my life and where I'm at at my age and, and, and the world that I live in right now is very different from my mother's. And so you might even find that what you've learned in the past from society or from your parents or family values um, may not be aligned anymore with that lifestyle choice or lifestyle, uh, you know, the definition of success uh, that is now true for you, right? Um, Really, when, when I look at saying, you know, when I said, you know, your parents were wrong, you weren't supposed to just pay bills and die. What I really mean by that is like, not that your parents were wrong about everything, but that actually there's a lot of things that's been taught to you by your parents or society uh, that may not be in conjunction to what is this different life that you want. Right. Um, so I always sort of take a look at values and, and a lot of our values are passed on by family. Right. So we can't sort of disregard that. Uh, what we know is what we've been taught. But all those things may not be true for us. Right. So you want to be able to, to really question yourself and go, how are you and your parents alike and how are you different? Right. So it's not disregarding everything they've ever taught you because some of it might be actually really uh, valuable and, and, and amazing for you. But there are some areas of difference uh, that allows you to see why you might be living your life differently and how you explain that to family and friends sometimes, you know, when they're like, are you crazy? Why are you giving up a secure job? You really know why you're in this hot pursuit of something different. So I would love for you to ask you guys a question right now. Like if you took a, uh, if you took a look at where you resonate with particular learnings from your parents and where can you see where your life choices may need to be different, right? So what have you learned from your parents that still apply and that still you really want to hold on to that truth, but where is that difference that you're like, well, my life is just different. I just want different things. And maybe my life choices may be different from theirs. What are those areas? What are the things that your parents have told you that you'd think no longer really applies to your life? I would love to hear that from you. So comment on the chat box there. Um, you're probably someone like me who uh, wants to find a very different version of success, right? And maybe success for people like us is no longer really measured by uh, stability, income, you know, that traditional marriage and a perfectly white picket fence home uh, with all the children, right? Things have changed in how we measure success. And I think if you are feeling like your definition of success needs to change, um, trust that feeling and know that it's not about um, not making the money you want to make, but actually making it in a different way and how you might want to get to success might actually be very, very different, uh, about what you knew was possible for you before. You know, I love talking about the future of work because I believe that technology has really changed the way that we now have different opportunities for ourselves these days, right? Very different from the time and age that our parents came from right? Not too long ago. Uh, technology has been the number one thing that has absolutely changed the way that we connect, the way that we influence, and the way that we um, can work, you know, it, it, that doesn't require us to be physically at an office space or be even physically with clients, right? Technology has a really allowed this connection to global clients. Uh, technology has allowed us to help us work remotely a lot more possible, you know, a lot more effectively than ever before with the tools and systems that we can put into place. I mean, you're probably watching this from somewhere not in Bali, right, where I'm from, and you're able to learn and teach and do all these things uh, that are 
on, you know, and, and accessible back in the day, right? And most service-based professionals, so anyone that, uh, you know, makes a living from their advice or from doing something and that, that they can uh, help actually just by being by their computer and doing something uh, that, that can utilize technology to help them um, do the work that they can do can work from anywhere. I mean, I've worked in the last four years, I've worked with lawyers, finance professionals, bankers, writers, nutritionists, like fitness coaches, all sorts. And there's so many creative ways to get your work out there using technology. So from things like if you want to teach, if you want to be a consultant, uh, if you're a designer, whatever there is, there are so many ways to do this without being physically in an office. Uh, Manuel, you said your, your mother was an immigrant as well and came to this country and built her business from the ground up. And though you respect that, building a business or climbing the corporate ladder is a dream for me and there's nothing wrong with that. For sure, you know, I think not everybody wants, and, and if you are working in a job you like, there's no problem, right? But it's, I'm talking to the people that are not satisfied, that are dissatisfied, and actually feel like there's a missing piece about their work, where they have more control over what they're working on, who they work with, and how they work. I definitely knew that one of my biggest dissatisfactions was not being in that creative control, you know, having to have like a standard operations procedure, <laughs> you know, of how I do my job, when I could actually do it differently, right? And really be choosing the types of things that are meaningful for you to work on really helps you feel like work isn't work, but it's really a contribution, you know, into the world that can that can help with that. Um, Manuel, thank you very much for sharing your story. Um, and if climbing the corporate ladder is, um, you know, not a dream for you, there's nothing wrong with that. And but it's definitely more uh, possible for you to think about what that new step is and a new path is for you and make that happen. Uh, because today, even to launch a business, it's not as expensive as it was before. If you have a website, you have a point of view, uh, you have the um, resilience to build that business, uh, you can have access to many, many global customers that can be coming to you. Um, I was just reading an article, actually, uh, as I was sort of preparing for this live stream. Uh, I was reading a great article on Forbes uh, from 2016. I think it was like October of last year uh, where they had did a huge survey, you know, in, uh, for, for people in America. And they found out that freelancers now make up uh, make up to 35 percent of the U.S. workforce, you know, and by 2020, Many predict that the freelancers will make up 50% of the labor force. Uh, this is huge. And I think a, a lot of what I've been saying about technology and sort of this urge for people to step out of traditional working is happening with or without you, you know, and even companies are looking for new ways to create that balance of work from home, you know, use tools without having to have physical meetings, who likes meetings, uh, and really coming into this new wave of the future of work that allows a lot more more freedom, flexibility, um, and, and creative control over your time, right? So when you have to work eight hours in an office, you spread that work to eight hours. But if someone said, hey, whenever you finish your work for the day, you can take, take off the day, you're going to be more focused and you're going to be a lot more productive to get it done. So I think even companies are really um, warming up to that fact. And being able to freelance and seeing the future of work go into freelancing or consulting or whatever it is, entrepreneurship uh, of, of independent remote workers is really attractive for people who don't really perceive a full time job uh, as providing like all the ways of security. Right. We've witnessed uh, economic crisis, the, the crisis, crisis, crises <laughs> that has happened around the world. Uh, lots of my friends were getting laid off when I was quitting my job, which sort of made me feel even shameful about quitting at the time. Uh, but but, you know, job security isn't job security anymore. You know, very, very, very easily. Sometimes you can be laid off. You can be replaced. You know, we don't want to be relying on just our, um, you know, nine to five jobs as the only way to make a living. And instead, this gives us a very interesting new opportunity of being much more uh, educated on how we can really create more opportunities to have better control over our earning potential so that we can depend on more ways than one salary to make a living, you know, and really align our lifestyle choices with our work lives. So if you are currently in a full time job, this is great. You're funding your life, you're responsible and you're not sort of making any big moves until you really understand what you may want to do. Um, and having a full time job is a, is a really great place to learn to experiment with things as a side hustle.
Learn to see where your skill sets lie. Learn to try new things while being safe under a full-time employment right now and use that salary to really fund the goals and the dreams that you're working towards. Don't do that soul searching and that discovery when you quit because that's so much pressure, but instead find ways to do it while you're still uh, being, you know, gainfully full-time employed, right? Um, and, and for all of you who have families, I mean, this is always a big motivator for you to really seek alternative ways to make a living because flexibility is the name of the game for you. You want to be able to work from home, perhaps, if you have a new, a new uh, kid uh, uh, coming through or are you, have, you have some young children. Uh, you may want that, That's a good really motivator to find ways to, to do work from home or do work remotely so that you can spend more time with your kids, right? Uh, and so when it comes to working, like changing and being open to change of how you're going to do something is that new normal. And so we need to embrace and really evolve with how we want to make a living and not leave it up to chance or not leave it up to when our bosses tell us that we can work from home. Uh, and we need to evolve into finding out those answers and upskilling ourselves with new tools and education if we are to succeed in the workplace of tomorrow. So we are right now in, in, in this sort of like fast changing, rapid change, uh, and this landscape of the workforce is definitely shifting uh, now more than ever. And, and there is this increasing need for people to transfer their skills into different areas, to learn to be adaptable, not to hold on to your resume like, oh, my God, it's the only thing I'll ever do for the rest of my life. And really look at other flexible work approaches, um, which could also mean sometimes taking on multiple jobs. You know, it's something like I used to do when I was in my transition of quitting. Um, I was working at my job and then I negotiated that to a contract role. I was working part-time hours, you know, at a bar just to make some extra money and doing a side hustle of launching my uh, mini agency at the time. You know, you have to sometimes be in, have different heads on or different hats on, you know, to, in order to sort of manage and explore different ways of saving money, uh, making a living uh, and experimenting with different interests that you might have. So you need to be flexible in your approach to do that. So those of us who are these disruptors, we are the ones that challenge the status quo, uh, really take on this feeling of curiosity, you know, letting our curiosity of what may be interesting to us and having that courage to follow our nose down that rabbit hole of curiosity and make it happen. And those people are the ones who will find um, really doing that. So we need to be adaptable, right? That's the first uh, piece of the puzzle is being open that what you know is not what you know. And there's more to learn. Uh, and that's why you're here as well, right? We, we need to have um, this mindset of knowing that how we used to perform our jobs, how we used to make a living, how do we used to get a job, uh, we can change that. But we may need to learn some new skills that feel really foreign to us at, 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 in the beginning. Uh, but learning, you know, buffer time for learning and buffer some uh, support systems for learning so that you can start to upskill and upknowledge yourself uh, to create the future that you deserve. Right. We also need to have uh, and learn the ability to collaborate digitally, uh, to build influence on a digital level and continuously be in sort of the student mindset of learning, uh, because it's so much about the mindset as it is about skills and experience, like that openness to be playing and experimenting and asking for help as we uh, learn these sort of new ways of do of adapting to the future of work is really, really necessary for our success. So. What are these skills, right, that um, you should be acquiring uh, when you're thinking about changing your future of work and how do we prepare for this change? Um, so the first thing is sort of what I always talk about, what I teach the most is you have to learn how to look at your skills differently. You have to learn how to chunk down what you do and see where you can repurpose your skills towards a new direction. So sometimes when you look at the jobs that you've had, the dissatisfaction could have been caused by what you were working on, who you were working with, what outcomes you were working towards that would either be in alignment with the value systems you have or the interest level that you have. And so when you think about your skills, it's like, how can you reapply that towards a new direction? What problems in the world do you want to help solve and contribute to? What are other types of audiences or customers that you want to help that can bring a lot more joy into your skill sets? Sometimes you might not even do anything different from what you used to do for work, but changing who you help can absolutely change how you feel about your skills, right? Learning how to repurpose your skills towards a much more meaningful direction. 
Then the next thing is really creating mini experiments, right? Learn to create mini experiments to test your interests in particular areas. I always have, always have coaching clients come to me and they'll say, you know, I've got all these things. I'm multi-passionate. I'm a multi-potentialite. I'm a polymath, you know, and that's awesome. I think a lot of people and most of us are multi-passionate people. We're not one dimensional humans. And so it's very normal to have interests in different areas. And what, what you want to consider is where do these interests uh, lie? You know, what are some interests that are very, specific to a professional, you know, a st strategic way of, of nurturing that interest to actually make you money with that interest, or maybe some interests are actually personal. That's just for you. It's the hobbies and the passions that you have, but not necessarily a, a, an interest or a passion that solves problems for other people. Those are different. They're not used in the business sense or give you clues as to the direction of your career. Um, and so when you want to experiment with new skill sets, so let's say if you are, have interest in writing, you blog or you journal, whatever it is that you do that you write, but you've never been paid to do it, you've got to create some mini experiments to test out that interest in that particular area, right? Which leads me to my second point. It's like, do things for, or, sorry, the third point, do things for free for the joy of it. Learn to play with solving problems, learn to play with all your interests and actually take on people for free. You know, if you want to write and you're like, I think I could write someone's about page on their website, or I feel like I can write someone's great bio on their LinkedIn profile, like experiment with that. Pick someone who needs that service and give it away for free as a way of testing whether or not you like doing that skill and whether or not you do give value to other people. You're never going to know until you do. So get out there in the field of play and really, really learn to experiment with your skill sets. Um, you also want to be crafting some time every single week, not just when you're waiting for time off or breaks, uh, to really immerse in something other than work, right? Um, take time to learn about yourself. Take time to learn about what are the gifts and talents that you want to utilize again and create something around. Talk to the people that are living the lives and doing the things that you want to do because that leads you to be in the vicinity of that feeling and that experience. You know, don't just keep doing the patterns and discipline of what you do right now because that life may not be leading you to a bigger life that you want to do. Make small incremental changes that are really, really going to allow you to start, start, start seeing things differently day to day without jumping off the cliff, but, you know, bringing a little bit more pleasure and alignment into your life. Um, and lastly, please, please don't do any of this alone. I know when I started my journey, I thought I couldn't talk to anyone. I thought that I was the only one going through it. And yes, fair enough. It was really just me in my own community, but there's so many people globally that can absolutely help you with your journey and support you because they're like-minded like you uh, and know that your ideas aren't crazy. Know that the dreams and goals you have for your life may be alternative, but it could be the new normal, you know? Have those new normal people surround your journey so that you can learn from them and ask questions and get the support that you need to thrive. Um, we only know what we know. So we have to really meet other people, meet other communities that will allow us to do the things that we want to do and give us the courage to really pursue the things that may not, uh, that may be scary, but exciting to pursue, even if it's something like the unknown right? That, that can, that can seem really frightening in the beginning, but having people to answer your questions, ha having people to help you when the going gets tough can absolutely, uh, expedite your journey for sure. Okay. So I would love to hear, uh, what you think about your version of success. Like how is that different from society, some society's expectations of you or your parents' expectations of you? And what do you think if you were to describe this new version of success, you know, and that happiness of what you can, you want to feel, you know, when you think about your career or feel when you think about your day to day life, what does that look like? Forget the numbers for a minute and forget how much money you should be making, but what does it feel like to have a deeply satisfying job? What does it feel like to have a meaningful business? You know, what, what assets and characteristics does that definition have that allows you to get into a bit more detail around it? I would love to hear from you. And the last thing I'm going to say before I sort of end this broadcast, and I hope that was really valuable for you to start thinking about where the future of work is going and how you can start shifting your knowledge and experience towards joining this wave of um, freelancers, remote workers, and 
Like I said, by 2020, half of the population of America will be remote and will be location independent. How are you going to prepare for that? How will you ensure that you are you are being that creative controller of your life and not relying on just that one paycheck to fund yourself? But actually, if anything ever happened to your job or when you do decide to quit, you know what to do and you can trust yourself to get those clients or to put yourself out there uh, to make a living on your own. One of the things that I'm doing really excitingly this year is I am leaving Bali for a couple months and going to Lisbon, which is really exciting for me because it's my first time in Portugal. And I have a lot of people who are in uh, Europe that have asked for me to come there to do retreats. So I am running a mini retreat in Lisbon. And here's the URL at the bottom here, uh, screwthecubicle.com forward slash Lisbon. Uh, it is a three night experience for anyone who wants to get that support and that incubation of help where you live with me and we actually explore Lisbon together and we incubate together to really find out what that what's next for you is, right? Everyone will have a def different definition of what their life design should be like, what happiness is for them, what a meaningful career is for them, uh, what success means to them. And I want to help you find that and create your own goals and your own plan and help you overcome some of the limiting beliefs and the fears that can preventing you from wanting to start a new path. So if you're interested in that, it's a very, very small group. I'm only taking up to about six to eight people because it's so intimate and we live together. Uh, I want to be sure that everyone that's coming is on the same path and, and we're going to use our cohesive intelligence of people and, and like-minded people together for three nights to really support you on your journey of transition and give you that courage so that when you do go home, you have clarity about what needs to change in your life, what is practical to change in your life and how to lead every action that you're constantly going to have conscious choices around uh, to build that new dream and that new life plan that you want uh, and realign your life and your work back uh, to represent the values that you have. Okay, so if you're interested in that, definitely go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash Lisbon and apply to speak to me so that we can talk about whether or not this opportunity is a good fit. Uh, Alexis, you said success for you is when you're making a real difference in other people's lives. To be able to make choices, not out of fear, but out of passion. So true. I remember at my first business, I was totally just money driven and just want, and just that pressure of making money. Then I lost that passion. I lost that passion of helping, you know, which... I think it's so important for us uh, when we're thinking about making a living that we have to also consider that what we're doing is not only just value, but something that we feel passionate about. You know, how we do it could be more passionate, how we construct even the way that our business models are or how we market ourselves or how we perform in our work needs to come from a place of not just money making, but really it's like the style and tone that I do it shows off my personality. It's the, the way that I want to do it without feeling like I'm somebody else. You know, all that can really make the pleasure of working so much more feasible for you. Uh, Jasmine, you said success to you is having a great work-life balance and the flexibility to make time for people and things that matter. Absolutely true. I think one of the biggest gifts that I received from being an entrepreneur is that when I wake up every morning, I get to decide what I want to spend time on. I get to decide where my goals are. And if I don't want that goal anymore, I can just sort of say, yeah, no more, start a new one. You know, having that, that freedom of choice is so valuable more than money for me. I would rather make a lot less and have creative choices in my life and time. You know, we really consider why we work so hard anyway. It's usually to buy us time, you know, to spend more time with family, to spend more time traveling, to spend more time with our other passions, you know, to, ha to have more of a life, you know, that is not just cons in, in consumed by making money, but actually having balance, right? As you said, uh, Jasmine, of, of, of time that we block away from fr family, friends, and activities that actually bring us a different way of pleasure and joy uh, that makes us be be better people makes our well-being a lot more healthier and in, in in an outcome of that makes you a much better human to serve other people you know in your work uh, I think that is such a, uh, a key thing to have right that balance of life I think that's really why the reason I moved over to Bali there's a lot of things that are like you know really old school and slow and sort of like snail pace here, but I really needed that, you know, and, and, and that was a conscious decision that I made and having to be very strategic 
about how I use technology to talk to you guys, right? Or help my clients. I had to learn different things of tools and technologies to allow me to do the work that I do and still maintain a lifestyle choice that I want. So much more possible today. Okay. Thank you so very much for joining me. Uh, and again, if you guys are interested to come and hang with me and live with me for three nights in Lisbon and figure out your escape route and your goal plans, uh, planning your goals, sorry, for your new life, what that is in all aspects of your life when it comes to your lifestyle choices, career goals, how you can repurpose your skill sets to a new direction, uh, how you're going to prepare your lives in your relationships, your finance, your finances to be ready for that, so that, that, that leaping zone of your life. Life, please, please join me in Lisbon or share it with someone that you know would really appreciate having a very, very blocked amount of time and explore an amazing city like Lisbon with me, but also get some work done together so that you get the support system that you need uh, to lead a courageous life on your own. Okay. Thank you so very much for joining me. Uh, I always love talking to you guys. I have these live streams once or twice a week, every single week. So your suggestions for what you want to learn and what you would love to converse about and discuss, uh, please let me know in the comments field your biggest burning questions so that I can film a live stream for you and answer your questions because all I do is making sure that you get uh, all the fears and obstacles moved out of your way so that you can bravely move towards the life that you deserve and want. Okay, that's it for me today. Thank you so very much for joining me and I will see you next week for another live stream. Bye.